فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روب الخير أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما المؤمنون إخوة فأصلحوا بين أخويكم واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى أن يكونوا عسى أن يكونوا خيرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء عسى أن يكون خيرا منهم ولا تلمزوا أنفسكم ولا تنابزوا بالألقاب بئس الاسم الفسوق بعد الايمان ومن لم يتب فاولئك هم الظالمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن ان بعض الظن اثم ولا تجسسوا ولا يغتب بعضكم بعضا ايحب احدكم ان ياكل لحم اخيه ميتا فكرهتم واتقوا الله ان الله تواب رحيم يا ايها الناس انا خلقناكم من ذكر وانثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا ان اكرمكم عند الله اتقاكم ان الله عليم خبير بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين we begin by praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we send blessings and salutations upon muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his companions his household may allah bless them and may allah bless every one of you and may allah bless your offspring those to come up to the end may allah keep us all steadfast upon this beautiful deen my brothers and sisters in islam my brothers and sisters in humanity i read before you verses of surah al hujurat i want you to take the translation of the quran later on today or sometime in the next few days and go through surah al hujurat which is a very very short surah and what you must do is go through the meaning learn it put it into practice wallahi you will lead a very very happy life by the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so are we prepared to do that yeah. i heard the yes mashallah so many yeses that i think the brother who translated it in fact do you know he is my colleague we studied in the same university at the same time yeah. sheikh mashallah barakallah fi He was in Medina Munawwara when I was in Medina Munawwara. The only difference is that he speaks a language I don't speak and I speak Shona which is the Zimbabwean language that he does not speak. That is the difference. May Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. So my brothers and sisters I heard so many yeses that I'm convinced you understand what I am saying that we don't need the translation. Do you agree? 
there we are. But we will still have it, inshallah, just for, for barakah purposes. So that is Surah al Hujurat. Why did I read that? Because in those verses, Allah tells us that the believers are brothers. The believers are brothers in belief. Did you hear that? Why we share something in common? If you have one mother and one father, what does that mean? That means that you actually are brothers and sisters because you share parents. Agree? When you share a deen and a religion, you are brothers and sisters in Iman. Do you agree? And when you share the same maker, even if you have a different religion, you are still brothers and sisters in humanity because Allah and the one who made all of you is the same maker. Do you agree? Subhanallah. This goes to show that we are brothers and sisters with all the other human beings on earth. And we should, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, treat them all in a similar way, filled with justice, with goodness, with kindness, with compassion. And I want to tell you something very interesting before I proceed to the next few verses. Do you see that Allah created you? And with you, He created so many other people. Unfortunately, some people think that they are the only ones in existence. They are so selfish that when there is water, they drink it alone. No one else must drink. When there is money, they must be rich alone. No one else must be rich. When there is something good, they want it for themselves. No one else must have it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us all that do you know the best from amongst you is he or she who benefits the rest of mankind. Khayrun nasi anfa'uhum lin nasi. The best of the people are those who benefit the rest of the people. He did not say, Anfa'uhum lil muslimin. He did not say, The best of people are those who are best to the Muslims. No, the best of people are those who are best to the rest of the people. So, are we going to be the best to the rest of the people? Insha'Allah. Insha'Allah, we will. Remember, this is a promise. When you see people around, Treat them with kindness. Speak to them. Have a smile on your face at least. Be just with them. Wallahi, they will see the beauty of this deen of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of us, when we see someone who greets us, they feel for us, they care for us, they do not cheat us, they are not vulgar, they are kind, they reach out to us, they benefit us. We are so happy. Well, you need to give that to the rest so that at least they can see the deen. Do you agree that today across the globe, many people are looking at Islam with the wrong eyes? They think that Islam spreads killing and terrorism and harm and evil. That's what the people think Islam is spreading. Yet, look at us. We are in tens of thousands here in Tamale. And subhanallah, we are standing so peacefully, we can feel the mercy of Allah descending upon us by the will of Allah. May Allah make us from those whom when we leave here, we are totally forgiven because the hadith says, nobody gathers in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah to make this from that, although we might not be in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but this was necessary to cater for the crowds. Then the mercy of Allah descends and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grants them a special mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in fact, the angels also are praying for the people. Subhanallah. And Allah is mentioning them to the angels. Allah mentions them, including us, bi today. Allah is speaking about us with the angels. What a blessed gathering. I want to tell you something. We share in common with the other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the fact that the Creator is the same. Look, I want to give you an example of perhaps a motor vehicle. When you see a Toyota, when you see a Toyota, you know that it was made in Japan, right? But there are so many types of Toyotas, right? They are all Toyotas, made in, by the same company. They have a reputation. However, Toyota is not the only motor vehicle on the road. 
You cannot say I'm only going to respect anyone who drives a Toyota. The rest of them, I'm not even going to give them way. They will bump into your car. There's going to be damage on the road. There's going to be problems on the road. On that road, you have someone else who drives Mercedes. To him, his car seems to be better than yours. By the way, I drive a Toyota. So his car seems to be better than yours. He says mine is an S-Class. I tell you, you need to respect him. He needs to respect you. Even if his car is 2018 model and yours is 1918, he needs to respect you on the road because if he does not, he will damage his car. Do you understand? You can be with a bicycle on the road. They need to respect you because if not, he will be in trouble and so will you. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, we are Muslimin. We know what we have is the best. There are others who might be doing something else. Respect them in the world. They are human beings. They are others. They follow a different faith. Leave them. Allah says, Lakum deenukum wali adeen. Learn your deen. They have their faith. They will practice it. We have ours. We will practice it. We need to live on earth coexist by respecting the humanity that we have. We will continue preaching, they will continue preaching, but we have harmony. We do not kill people, we do not harm people. Islam was not sent in order to harm people, but rather in order to benefit people and in order to ensure that peace is what will prevail by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I give you another example. I am standing here, I see beautiful greenery in this city of Tamale. When I was coming, I saw cows, I saw some sheep, I saw some goats looking so beautiful, mashallah. May Allah preserve this beautiful wealth of your lovely country. May Allah preserve it. I tell you how happy I was. And I was saying, subhanallah, even the dogs, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has asked us to be kind to those because who made the dog? The same one who made you, he made the dog. How can you treat the dog in a bad way? I want to give you the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, بَيْنَمَا رَجُلٌ يَمْشِي بِطَرِيقٍ اشْتَدَّ عَلَيْهِ الْعَطَشِ While there was a man walking oh, oh, on a day where it was very, very hot and it was the desert, he was very, very thirsty. He was very, very thirsty. فَوَجَدَ بِئْرًا So he saw a well. He saw a well. I'm thirsty and I see a tap. To open the tap, it needs my own hand. I cannot just look at the tap and say, open, 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 and expect it to open. No matter what language I speak, you need to make an effort. So he made the effort and he went down in the well. When he went down in the well, he drank water. So now his thirst was over. He came back up and he saw a dog. This hadith is sahih. It's a correct authentic narration from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He saw a dog. It was a hot day. And the dog was panting out of thirst. So the man says, لَقَدْ بَلَغَ هَذَا الْكَلْبِ مِنَ الْعَطَشِ مِثْلَ مَا كَانَ قَدْ بَلَغَ مِنِّي I think this dog is very thirsty, as thirsty as I was before I went into the well to get the water. So let me go back into the well and let me get some water for this poor dog that is dying of thirst. Are you listening? This is Rasulullah sallallahu telling us. There was a man in his heart. He was thinking, you know, this dog was made by Allah. Allah is the creator. Allah did not make things for nothing. You are being tested. So he decided, let me go down. Wallahi, he went down into the well. When he went into the well, he realized he has no utensil to take the water up besides his leather sock or the shoe that he was wearing. So he and he filled his leather sock. Imagine your shoe you are wearing now. You know, I have a shoe of leather. This was a leather shoe. Will you fill water in it? Anyone ready to fill water in your shoes? The answer is no. Most of us know. But when you have to, you will do it, right? Subhanallah. So he filled his shoe with water. He came back up. Now you and I know when there is a dog that comes here, we are Muslimin. What do we do? We know that we will run away, especially the sisters, right? 
And nowadays even the brothers will run away. Subhanallah. Go. Why? Because you don't want the dog to lick you. You don't want it to disturb you. You don't want it as a Muslim. Yes, we, we are allowed under certain conditions to keep a dog. Perhaps for security, perhaps for farming, perhaps uh, to look after maybe a, a person who is blind, etc. But there is... There are many rules and regulations governing our relationship with the dog. This man filled his own sock or leather, leather shoe with water. He came up, he brought the dog near and he made the dog drink the water. So the Prophet ﷺ says, Allah loved that compassion so much that Allah forgave him. Now think. If Allah wanted, it could have been better than a dog. It could have been a beautiful peacock which opened its feathers and it was thirsty. So the man saw it and said, wow, let me help the peacock. It could have been a goat or a sheep which subhanallah, the man is closer to. It could have been something sweet, a cat, a kitten. But no, it was a dog. Do you know what it was? A dog, subhanallah. Why was it a dog? Did you ever ask yourself? Okay, before I tell you perhaps one of the reasons, I can tell you something else. It could have been another human being, right? It could have been a pretty lady, subhanallah. Oh, he got up. Oh, mashallah. Would you like water? Would you like water? But no, it could easily have been a woman. Because if it was anything, subhanallah, a, a human being is far more important than a dog. A human being is far more important than a dog. But Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that was a dog. And this is a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because if it is a dog and you helped it, your sincerity level is very, very high. That's it. You cannot do it unless it's for the sake of Allah. Did you hear that? If it is a woman, pretty, good looking, subhanallah, you see on the road when there is a woman driving, even if she comes out of the car to see if there is a flat tire, 10 vehicles of boys and men will stop. Hey, do you need help? They will fight each other to help her. Why? Because she's a pretty lady. That's all. When an old man gets stuck, only the sincere will stop and say, Uncle, please sit down. Let me help you. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. When a woman needs a lift on the road, there will be 20 boys ready to take her. But when the old man is walking with his stick, only when you love Allah, you will stop and say, My father, let me take you. Allah. Takbir! Allah. Takbir! Allah. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. So, the sincerity, you do it for the sake of Allah. You are kind to the animals for the sake of Allah. Now I come with the big question. If that man achieved forgiveness because he was kind to a dog, what do you think you would achieve if you were kind to another human being? You will achieve more than that by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us forget about this idea in the heads of some that you know when you look at people who are different from you, they are your enemies, they are bad, they are worse than animals, etc. May Allah forgive us for that type of statement, for that type of thinking, for indeed it is ignorance. When we look at others, we should look at it as an opportunity to display the good deen that we have so that if they were the enemies of Islam, at least they recognize that no, I used to hate Islam, but now I know it is a good religion. Maybe they won't accept Islam, but at least the enmity was reduced. That is a very big achievement. Subhanallah. And sometimes what would happen is people might love the deen and come into Islam. Some of us here, maybe we are reverts to Islam. Maybe we converted to Islam. But most of us are fortunate to be born as Muslims. It does not belong to you alone. In fact, if you want to go to Jannatul Firdaus, one of the good ways and easy ways to get it is to spread the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to teach people, to guide them. The hadith says, Wallahi, la an yahdi Allahu bika rajulan wahidan khayrun laka min humrin na'am. Wallahi, if Allah uses you to guide one person, it is better for you than 
something very valuable. At that time, the conveyance that was the most valuable was known as the red camel. Today, it is something beyond that. Subhanallah, you will achieve such a great reward. So my brothers and sisters, now we go back to Surah Al-Hujurat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Mu'minun al-Ikhwah. The mu'minun, the believers, they are brothers and sisters. So whenever there are brothers and sisters who may dispute with one another, the job of all of us is to try and help them to resolve that dispute. Because when we dispute, the Quran says, وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ Do not dispute with one another. Because you will become unsuccessful and you lose your power. When we are small, 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 small groups, what happens? Each group has not much power. When we are a large group, even if we are breathing, subhanallah, it has a big difference. It makes a big difference because we are together. To be united and to be together requires a lot of sacrifice. You need to sacrifice a lot. Each one of us has pride. Pride is actually from shaitan when it goes beyond a certain level. So much so that the hadith says, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال حبة من خردل من كبر He will not enter paradise in whose heart is a mustard seed's weight worth of pride. We are talking here of the arrogance, that pride. You know when someone says, I am proud to be a Muslim, the English language, that word that is used, does not translate as kibr in Arabic. In fact, it is happy. I am happy to be Muslim. It does not mean I am arrogant to be a Muslim. No. I am proud to be a Muslim means I am glad, I am happy that I am a Muslim. We are not talking of that type of pride. We are talking here of arrogance. What is arrogance? When you despise people, you look at others and think they are low, they are small, they are nothing. That is pride. When you look at the truth and the justice and you deny it and reject it, that is pride. That's explained by the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. So let us work on our hearts. Let us make sure we remove that pride. We are all brothers and sisters. I care for you just like I care for myself. I will try my best to reach out to you just like I reach out to myself. My brothers and sisters, that is what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught. So he says, if you would like the mercy of Allah, then help each other to resolve the differences and the disputes that we may have amongst one another with absolute respect. Sometimes there will be certain matters whereby we may differ in our understanding of the deen Trust me, for as long as there is evidence to prove what you are saying regarding that which is Islamic, let it go, let it happen, let it be. Some people raise their hands, some people don't raise their hands. Some people say the Basmala before the Fatiha. Some people say it aloud, some people say it soft. You know what? There is evidence to prove. There is evidence. You need to learn. You follow what you are taught with its evidence and inshallah you will succeed. But to continue, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. O you who believe, do you know when you hear Allah saying, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, you ask yourself, Hal ana min al ladheena amanu? Am I from among those who believe? What is the answer? Are you from amongst those who believe? So if Allah says, O you who believe, you should put everything aside and listen. What is Allah saying? What is He saying? لَا يَسْخَرْ قَوْمٌ مِّنْ قَوْمٌ Don't mock each other. Even the women don't make a mockery of one another. And the men don't laugh, mock at each other. Don't make jokes about each other that will hurt people. Don't hurt their hearts. Don't call people bad names. Subhanallah. Don't call people bad nicknames that they don't like. Someone's name is Fatima, for example. What a beautiful name. If you want to give her a beautiful name that she likes, maybe shorten it for some reason. There's no harm. There's no harm if she likes it. If she does not like it, be careful. Be careful. You hurt their feelings. It is actually sinful behavior. If this Islam teaches you so much that 
you are not even allowed to call someone with a name that they don't like because it will hurt their feelings? Do you think the same religion can teach you to harm them physically? Never. Never. Even with your mouth, you are not allowed to harm someone. Subhanallah, learn to love each other. Learn to live with each other in harmony, in goodness, by the will of Allah. And you will prosper. Because the verse I read earlier, Allah says, when you dispute, you lose your power. You will be unsuccessful. But when you happen to resolve the matters and when you are together and when you have that as an ummah, you will grow. Any nation across the globe, study the nations. The most successful nations are those who stand together. They stand one. Recently there was a country, the entire nation stood together in the face of aggression. What happened as a result, subhanallah, they are successful, subhanallah. They are people who will emerge and have emerged successful by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we ourselves cannot stand together, what would happen? May Allah bless us all. May Allah grant us ease. So my brothers and sisters, we continue with these verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, regarding spying, eavesdropping, backbiting, talking behind the backs of people in a way that they would not like it. If it is true, it is called ghibah. If it is a lie, it is called namima or bohtan actually. When we meet people, we speak nicely in front of them. Salaamu Alaikum, how are you? MashaAllah, everything good. Hey, lovely. As soon as we turn around, hey, that person is a devil. They are a Satan. They are a snake. Why? The Quran tells you, be careful, don't do that. You meet people, you greet them correctly. If you have a problem with someone, resolve it respectfully. Respectfully. Now I want to tell you, if I have a problem with you, if I go to the whole world and talk about it, will I solve the problem? No, I make it bigger. But if I'm a true believer and I care genuinely for all that Allah has told me to care for, I will come to you, I will try to resolve the matter. I will speak to you once, twice, ten times, twenty times and the matter is resolved. And the public does not even need to know. The public does not need to know the matter was resolved. But today we enjoy one small thing, Instagram. The next thing, Facebook. The next thing, Twitter. The next thing, Snapchat. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to use technology in a beautiful way. Amen. Then, and I'm going to jump straight through to the last few verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us something even very, very interesting. He says, O oh, you who believe. Ya ayyuhal nas. In fact, he does not say, O oh, you who believe. He says, O oh, people, O oh, people, I have created you or we have made you from a single male and a female. So Allah is showing us we are all related, subhanAllah. We are all related to one another. We have relatives, some are Muslim, some are not Muslim, some have passed away, some are alive, some will come later on. Allah says, Inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha. And we have made you into different nations and people, different tribes, in order that you recognize one another. Allah says, we made you different tribes, different people. You see, there are different races, different parts of the world, different colors. All this is not in order to hate on people or to consider people little. No, it is only for recognition purposes. So one day there was a young boy asking me, what do you mean recognition? So I said, you know, if all of us were exactly the same, we would need number plates. <laughs> Imagine everyone looks the same. Everyone is the same height. We become Toyotas. Right? The cars, they can confuse you. If they are all black, all land cruiser, everything similar, what would happen? You distinguish your vehicle by the plate number. Why? Because everyone is the same. Allah says, no, 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 no. Man, you are far higher than that. We won't give you a number plate. We will give you your own fingerprint, your own iris print, your own identity, your own height. Your own color, your own language, your own everything. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a gift. Never be embarrassed about your color, your language, your height. No, never be embarrassed. It is a gift from Allah. 
We are equals in the eyes of Allah. And wallahi, I want to share one last thing with you. And that is when I travel in the world, I notice something, wallahi. The Muslims who do not live in Africa do not know sometimes the Islam in Africa. Allah. I was telling my colleague, Dr. Muhammad, today in the car, or was it yesterday in the vehicle in Kumasi? And today as well, I spoke about it. I said, my brother, you can go to the Middle East. You can go wherever you want. You will find when they are giving up their deen, Allah is replacing them with people in Africa. <laughs> I have seen people in the Middle East itching to uncover themselves or to dress immodestly. And I have seen the total opposite in the most remote places of Africa. Look at what Allah says. If you are to turn away, Allah will replace you with someone else. He does not need you. He does not need me. So if you are to turn away, He will replace you with someone else. And then they won't be like that. They won't be like you. They will be better than you. So I always say, may Allah strengthen us. May Allah keep us steadfast. Do not give up your deen. Be strong. Keep on teaching it to your children. Don't worry what others think of you. No problem. You have your life. You have your Allah. He is with us. And He will guide us. We go through our trials, our tribulations, our struggles. We go through difficulty. No problem. Allah is watching. Allah knows. When we get to Jannatul Firdaus, May Allah gather us together with Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I am not a rock star who came here today. The only reason you know me is because I have said what Allah and His Rasul have said. If I did not say that, Wallahi, you are not going to know who I am. So therefore, you need to glorify Allah and you need to praise the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rather than getting excited that this young man from Zimbabwe visited us today. More important is Allah and His Rasul. Like I said, I am nothing if I did not say qala Allahu wa qala Rasul. And it's my duty to tell you this. Last time I was in Accra, last year, and I was so happy at at, at the welcome, it was very warm, but I was fearing Allah because it was such a big welcome. I started to get scared. Will Allah forgive me? Because look at these people. They are so excited. I don't know if there is any excitement beyond this excitement. And it's not supposed to be for me. It is supposed to be for Allah and His Rasul. I found it difficult to speak. I don't know if some of you know about what happened. I found it hard to speak. Why? Because I love my brothers and sisters. But at the same time, I was scared in my heart to say, Ya Allah, what answer am I going to give you on the day of judgment? I am not even fit to stand here. If I said something from my pocket, I am wrong. I have to speak what Allah has said. You need to develop your relationship, not with me. No, with Allah and His Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If I speak to you and what I am telling you brings you closer to Allah, then I am correct. You make dua for me, that's all. But if I bring you closer to me, I am not the owner of Jannah. I am not the owner of forgiveness. I cannot give you that. I can only show you the path to say, you want the forgiveness? Get to Allah. Become a better person. Lead a happy life. Lead a happy life. Don't miss your salah. Dress properly. Read the Quran. Speak honestly. Reach out to people. Be kind to the rest of humanity. Reach out to the animals like what we said today. Thank Allah for what He has given you. These are the messages that will bring you closer to Allah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us true love. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us in Jannatul Firdaus. We don't know each other very well here, but in Jannah, we will get the chance to sit and to talk and inshallah to discuss about how it was in Tamale one day. Subhanallah.
May Allah bless you all. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka.